Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing what happens if you're on a moving vehicle and you run backwards and jump off the back at the exact same speed that the vehicle is moving but in the opposite direction, will you just land still on the ground? Holy cow, this is fast. So the idea for this video came when I made a video about shooting a Nerf gun backwards while I was driving forward in my car. balls right here. <laughs> so in this video I measured how fast the ball was leaving the Nerf gun and then I drove that exact speed in my car and then fired the gun backwards at the same speed and it made the ball just drop exactly in place not moving forward or backward. But then that led to a discussion in the comments section talking about what if you were on a train moving forward does that mean that to get off a stop the train doesn't have to stop but you could just catapult yourself in the opposite direction at the same speed as the train and you would just land directly at your stop, not moving forward or backward, but you just land in place and be able to walk to wherever you need to go. But so when you jump off a train, like the train's going this way and you jump. Then, then the, you're still going forward, so you're just gonna tumble forward. But if you're running backward, you're still going forward, but you're running backward. You okay, so the two things I'm going to be trying is first, I'm going to try just jumping straight up as I'm going at a constant speed. And if everything works out right, I should just land in the exact same spot in the trailer as if I weren't moving at all. Then the next thing I'm going to be doing is running as fast as I can backwards, matching the speed of the car in the reverse direction and jumping out and just landing completely still on the ground. Okay, this is my driver here, Joanna. You ready for this? I Can I'm, you drive at a constant speed? I think so. The tricky part will be the acceleration because I don't want you to fly off. Well, you shouldn't be accelerating while I'm Well, to get so. to the constant speed. Yeah, so let's stay at a constant speed so I can match it and not tumble to the ground. But I am an excellent driver, so She's very I'm excellent. confident in my Excellent ability. driver. Let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to be communicating with Joanna driving in the car with my phone. So I'll have to make sure she's not accelerating, obviously, when I'm jumping. Make sure she hits the constant speed, and then I'm gonna sprint as fast as I can and jump. And hopefully that when I land, I won't just tumble backwards because if I don't match the speed perfectly, my momentum's still gonna be going that way, so I'll tumble backwards like this, hence the helmet. And I should mention, don't try this at home. I'm a trained professional engineer, scientist, Okay, we're not, let's go. I'm gonna close it for this. Okay, and just stay at this speed. Okay, ready? Okay, so why didn't I fly off the trailer when I jumped up when we were driving at a constant velocity there? Well, the reason is because I'm moving at the same speed as the vehicle, and besides the wind resistance, which was negligible, there's no reason why I should suddenly slow down and be pushed off the back of the vehicle. For example, you can see what I mean when I show you a small-scale version of this. So this is a vehicle that shoots a steel ball up as it's driving, And you'll see that as it starts driving and shoots the steel ball up and it's going to land exactly where it shot off in the vehicle. But from its reference frame, it's just going popping up and going back down. So depending on your reference frame, its location profile is different, either a straight line up and down or a parabola. Okay, so here's how we're gonna do this. So I have my trailer here with some wheels connected to the back of the trailer here so that when I open it, These are gonna drag on the ground. Then I'll get in the trailer 
and I'm gonna try to match the exact same speed as the car when I'm running so that when I run and jump off it, I'm gonna exactly equal the speed of the ground and I shouldn't be moving whatsoever. Okay, you can start. Let's go for it. Okay, stay constant. Holy cow, this is fast. <laughs> oh man, that is so cool. It's like I'm sprinting and then all of a sudden I'm just standing still. <laughs> Oh man, if I don't get it right, I'm afraid I'm just gonna start tumbling backwards, but I got it right then. I don't know how I'm able to adjust for it, but somehow I look over at the camera and kind of match it, and then I can match it just fine and land there. And I think the balance helps as soon as I hit the ground. <laughs> Woo! Overall, that worked way better than I thought it was going to be. I thought for sure I was gonna fall. That should tell you how much I like doing this channel because I filmed it knowing I was probably gonna fall, but in the end, I didn't. So that's wins overall. But what does it say about my wife? If she was willing to let me do it, if she, well, it depends on did you think I was gonna fall or not? Yes. Okay, she knew I was gonna fall, so. But I had a helmet. <laughs> Okay, so it actually worked. I was able to run at the same speed as the vehicle in the opposite direction and jump off and just stand completely still. So what that means is that it is possible, let's say you're on a high speed train, you could get rocketed off the back of it as long as you match the speed of the train and just land in place and the train would never have to stop. But you'll notice that I needed about 12 feet of space to even get up to speed to jump off the back of the trailer so that I could match the velocity of the car in the opposite direction. So the higher speed you're going, the more length you need to get up to speed to jump off the back of it. So if you have a long train going really fast, you would need a lot of distance to get up to speed to actually get off the back of the train. So maybe you could have some version where the train's going this way, you sit in a seat and it starts accelerating backwards and by the time it reaches the back of the train, then you just jump off the seat. Thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. And also you can click the bell button so that you can be notified when I release my latest video. And you can check out theactionlab.com to see the Action Lab experiment boxes and my experiment book as well. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.